ती प्रवचन आज एवं प्रस्तुत करना पाए में हम धन्य महसूस करद जिस को शीर्षक परम गुरुची नाई को डायरी जीवित सदगुरु सब मोचनीय आत्मा मुक्ति दिन सकूँ चार भाग को दोसों भाग गुरु रिष्य बीच कार्यक्रम में जो चिनीर अंग्रेजी में दी को थी मे पास दुई हजार उन्नीस ताइवान में जिस फर्मस भाई भाई Why do these divas and heavenly beings praise the Buddha so much? Like he rescued numerous beings, liberate numerous beings, and rescue the world. Even that's what they said, huh? How? We don't see any. It's not written in the Bible, in the Sutra. It's written there that Shakyamuni Buddha has. Uh, Disciples, a lot, a lot, but they didn't say the whole world follow him, right? So how, how, why, the divas, the heavenly beings praise Shakyamuni Buddha as he rescued numerous beings, rescued the world. How? Why? Anybody knows? Anybody knows? Uh, I am my friend. <laughs> I can give you. Yeah. Tell me. Uh, so, I is Cai Ha, or is Shi Yamuni Fu, the Buddha, to call his inner self to save all beings. To save all beings. Ten thousand beings to save all beings. Ten thousand beings to save all beings. Okay, okay. Ah, close, but not yet. Okay. He said that maybe the second Muni Buddha, he has numerous of. A transformation body, a light body, transcendental body. For he will manifest himself, go different places, and rescue people. This is not the cause, okay? Yeah, it's not the cause because, for example, he manifests with his light body in the jail to help the queen only. You see, but no one else around the queen will see him or hear any instruction. Of the Buddhas, you see, so the transcendental body has a limit. It can be only there at that time to that person or that group of people to do that job only. I also have other body to do some other job. <laughs> you know, physical manifested physical body in the world. I told you already before. I think somewhere. 内在的万能力量提升那个众生的灵魂，所以那些灵魂都能够得到嗯、呃、那个解脱。这个他讲什么？有人翻译一下。内在的万能力量提升所有众生的灵魂，所以释迦牟尼佛那个时代的灵魂都可以解脱。耶，那都对了啦！过来，过来，过来，<笑>给他。Okay. Mm. No, I don't have anything. <laughs> okay, no, never mind. It's cool. Ah,、uh, I don't have any pen. I do have at home. I should have given her something else, like a pen or something, right? <laughs> giving everything away, and I have nothing. <laughs> okay. When a Buddha. Is in the world, any Buddha, okay. In the world, he can use. He has, of course, cannot imagine power. Yes, so he can do anything. Oh, thank you. This is not so beautiful, huh? Oh, I like beautiful. I say this is not so beautiful. I love beauty. <laughs> I love beautiful things. <laughs> I'm born like that. I <laughs> can't help it. <laughs> All right then. When a Buddha is in the world, because of the physical body, is connected with all beings in the physical realms. Yes, you are connected together in this physical dimension, one way or another. And then you take food from this world. Yes, and you breathe the same air with everyone else, 
okay? And you drink water from the world and many other things, okay? Every little thing connected the Buddha with this world, yes. So he can use that to connect with people and help them to liberate. Do not think that you are the best spiritual practitioner because you are initiated. No, you are not all the worst. Some of you are friends, you know, and uh, ancient disciples who come back, uh, helping in some way with the world, okay? Some of you are enemies coming back to, <laughs> uh, yeah, making trouble. But still, in this way, you still connected with the Master, close, yeah? And then you also redeem, you also be redeemed but sometimes not easy. So you can see Shakyamuni Buddha has what kind of disciple next to him. Hmm? The first one were the, the five who has been drinking his blood in long, 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 long eons ago when they were uh, kind of demons, you know, blood-sucking demons. We call them nowadays Dracula. Actually, Dracula, it doesn't mean demons. It was the name of one of the count, you know, one of the royalty, long, long time ago. He used to live in a, a castle alone, and maybe he has something to do with this, with this kind of unthinkable deeds or something. And then since then, anyone who has this kind of tendency or, or this kind of quality, they call him Dracula, yeah? I mean, blood-sucking beings, okay? They live on blood. I haven't read my diary yet, <laughs> and I just explaining it, keep going on. I will read it, okay? It's very short anyway, yes. That's why the Master has to be reborn physically. Otherwise, it would be so easy just to stay in heaven and hula, hula up, and everybody enlightened, liberated. It's not like that. You have to make affinity with beings in the physical levels, yeah? You have to suffer with them laugh with them, you know, uh, cooperate with them, doing things with them, many different ways, okay? So that's why all the divas in, that came down and they praised the Buddha, that the Buddha teach difficult things, liberate beings who are difficult to be liberated, and numerous of them. Otherwise, as far as we see the record, Buddha has only maybe, maybe some thousands of disciples, a maximum maybe tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands maybe, or even one million. How much can it be at that time with the difficult transportation and communication? Even then, it wasn't the whole world that came to be his disciple and initiated, and even that queen as well. She heard of his name perhaps but maybe she could not go to see him due to some reason. Or maybe she heard it already after she's in jail, or maybe she was just a follower, but not the initiated disciples. Even, I told you, we read already in the sutra that Ananda, the foremost, closest to the Buddha, was not initiated until then, many years after. The Buddha wasn't in a hurry <laughs> to give anyone initiation, believe it or not. Huh? And Ananda was his cousin, royal cousin, and life after life they've been together. And Ananda was his favorite disciple, and his selected uh, attendant, the one and only. So Ananda does everything from A to Z for the Buddha. And he didn't give him any initiation until after Ananda get seduced by the artisan who used a Brahman heaven mantra with the most powerful, nothing can resist, to charm him into her room, into her house. And the Buddha has to counteract it when Ananda was praying so hard in his heart, he's a monk, he didn't want to have any woman relationship. He sincerely did not. He was just lured into it because he was weak. He's not strong enough. 
uh, thanks to the Buddha. Huh? <laughs> he should have given him <laughs> protection by initiation or something more. Or the mantra that he used afterward to rescue Anand. So uh, Buddha has to send Manchusri to recite that mantra, the counter mantra, in order to rescue Anand. Then uh, Anand like woke up from a deep slumber and run, 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 run back to the Buddha, <laughs> cried like baby. <laughs> Thank you, sorry, whatever, you know, right? Yeah. It's probably not written in the sutra, but we can imagine how, how he felt when he ran out of that artisan house, ran back to the Buddha. Mm. But, uh, okay, it's not every woman can seduce Anand. Just this mantra is too powerful. It's called Brahma Heaven. Brahma is the highest, top of the third world. Yeah, the creators of the three worlds. And that mantra from that heaven, of course, nothing in this world can cure, except with the Buddha's counter mantra, which is very powerful. Yes. Uh, which is uh, many pages, I told you. <laughs> I did not read it to you because I, I'm not sure if it's useful. Okay, never mind, you have the five names and the gift, and you could not even remember not to talk about this 20 pages or 10 pages mantra, okay, yeah? And it's not because of Brahma Heavenly Mantra only, it is because they had affinity with each other, too deep, deep-rooted affinity for long, many lifetimes and long aeons ago. So when they met each other, she could not let him go. She was the one who is more attached. Maybe long ago you had an, a relationship with one woman, for example, and then you did not uh, want to continue the relationship anymore, maybe you divorced or something. Maybe many lifetimes ago, or maybe this lifetime still. But the woman did not want to end the relationship. So just you alone and it doesn't make everything completely erased and deleted and disappear. So the woman continued to maybe stalk in you, uh, maybe try in many ways, call you, email you, <laughs> and visit you, making all kinds of excuses to visit you, or to see you, to talk to you, or maybe using some even wicked trick to make trouble for your life, hmm? after you already have another relationship or don't have any relationship. Similarly, in a former life, you have a relationship with somebody and you quit, but the woman or the man did not want to quit. She might reincarnate again as a woman or as a man, continue to follow you in some way. In Chinese, we say, yuan jia lu zai, meaning <laughs> enemies road are very narrow. You always bump into each other. Huh? You want it or not. <laughs> That's why it's better you don't make any enemies. Huh? No. <laughs> or love your enemies. And that is why most enemies come back to each other as husband and wives, or parents and children, to repay the others in love or kindness, or to equalize the hatred, enmity yeah, between them. Okay? That's why all the master tell you, love thy neighbor, love thy enemy. Yeah. <laughs> Buddha say the same, forgive and love. But it's not easy. Therefore, many of the marriage relationships are very rocky, very unpeaceful, very troublesome. But they still continue. They cannot leave each other. Somehow, the more fighting, the more they stay with each other. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> until uh, the karma ends, I guess. Sometimes it doesn't end until you go into the coffin. Then it ends, maybe. <laughs> if it ends there, then next life you don't have to continue with that person or the another person anymore. If it doesn't end yet, if the karma still has some residues, then maybe next life continue. For a while or for long, it depends on how big uh, the karma. Yeah, no escape. That's why 
because the Buddha didn't just liberate his own disciples, the official disciples. He liberated all beings on the same planet that he lived, as long as he lived. Jesus said the same, I am the light of the world as long as I am in the world. No one goes to the Father except through me. That's what he said. It is because of that. Yeah. And uh, some disciple asked him about his father. He said, I am here already. Why you ask about the father? Meaning he and the father are one anyway. No one goes to the father except through me. Similar like that. I am the light of the world as long as I am in the world. What is the light is for? The light is a symbol of direction. You see, without light, you can't walk. And the light leads you to where you're supposed to go. So where are we supposed to go? Heavens. We came from heavens. We are the children of God. We must go home. When Jesus said the light, he doesn't mean, you know, the physical candlelight at that time. At that time, we don't have electricity. So the maximum light would be a big uh, fire light from the oil lamp, like the oil light. So when he said the light, he did not mean this kind of physical light. So he meant the light of the world, not just the light of his room, the light of the palace or the big light, the light of the world. When he talked like that, he talked to the followers, the disciples who already understood, yeah? The light, he means this limitless light, this unimaginable light, this all-pervasive light, yeah? Therefore, he said, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Yes. Meaning this light could lead you to heaven. Yeah. The heavenly light will lead you where? Cannot lead you to your bathroom or your bedroom, no? Or supermarket? <laughs> if it's the heavenly light, where would it lead you? Yeah. Heaven. Wow. Enlightened very much. <laughs> Similarly, the Buddha also liberated all beings with his power, his inside light, yeah? So Jesus did not say the same uh, vocabulary. It just meaning the same. At that time, many of Jesus' teaching afterward have been cut, edited, to suit the government at that time. Yeah. They make a deal or something. Okay, you can continue to go to your church and practice your uh, faith, but you have to cut this, this, this. It's not suitable for our society, not suitable for our government. You know, put many people out of job, for example, like that. Like the animals, farm raisers or the butcher, stuff like that. And the merchants who deal with the meat and the fish and stuff. <laughs> 